Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today I'm going to do a first look at a reel that uh, is a new reel. Uh, it came off of a pole. It's called the Takeoff. Uh, oftentimes uh, these will get returned from manufacturers uh, by way of sporting goods stores and that when a pole that's for sale as a combination uh, fails and uh, the manufacturers take them back and then they wholesale them out. And I got a group of these. Uh, this is the Pen Defiance 25 LW level lined. Uh, it's the successor to the 209 or the 309 series. I haven't had one apart so uh, this one's got a little bit of a, a, a rough feeling to it. I'm not quite sure if there's anything wrong with it or if it needs some lube or whatever. But uh, we're going to do a first look. Uh, we'll take a look at the reel. I'll open it up. We'll, we'll see how it's made what the componentry of it is and uh, see if it measures up to the old 209-309. So I start by uh, taking the handle off and this is this has got a little bit different geometry than the older reels. It has a different uh, set in the handle and from what I can tell from the, uh, the schematic that I pulled it's uh, very much uh, kind of in the line of say a, a Shakespeare tie water kind of a setup. Uh, as opposed to the, uh, the more traditional pen gearing kind of uh, uh, routine. But at any rate, took the handle off, took the, uh, we did that by removing the, uh, the hole down for the nut, and uh, then we took the cap off, and then we took the tension washer off, which is the little round one, and uh, now we're going to take the star drag nut off. There's one thing about working on new reels, everything comes off easy. Uh, there's two tension springs uh, that go beneath that. And then there's two more that come on top of your bearing. And then we have a one ball bearing here. This is a four ball bearing reel, so we'll, uh, we'll find out where the other ones are. All right, to complete the uh, takeoff on the side then, we're going to just pull the side plate screws. These are... Uh, uh, typical of a, uh, a graphite framed reel, which is what this is. So this is different than the Bakelite sides of the, the 209 309s. This is a high speed reel. And if I can just read ahead a little bit on the uh, side frame, when I move it back, we'll go to capacities and the like. So uh, these are pretty popular. They sell around uh, $65, $75 uh, at retail. And uh, as I said, they, they've kind of replaced your 209. Okay, so four stall, uh, stainless steel bearings, 330 yards of 25 pound test, or 600 yards of 30 pound braid. So that's a that's a large capacity reel. So that's for Great Lakes, ocean fishing, etc. Okay, with the four side plate screws out, we're going to pull the side plate off. There's a bearing there, uh, and I'm going to assume that this has pretty much got the factory uh, uh, lubrication in it. But uh, if not, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead. I said the bearing's there. The bearing's sitting here on the spool. I'll take that off. And then uh, underneath this very much, again, looks so, somewhat like a Shakespeare type order. It's not, not uh, amazingly new technology. It's got a through post that everything sits on. Uh, it looks like it's got a ratchet. We'll take all this off. It's got a ratchet that... Uh, is the anti-reverse. It's not an instant anti-reverse at all. Here's your uh, your old friction anti-reverse lever. And this is your traditional uh, uh, free spool release with your yoke and your uh, pinion gear. So let's just uh, let's pull this off, see what we got. So this is the, um, this is your ratchet gear for your anti-reverse. This is your anti-reverse mechanism. You can see how it's friction that's driving this. It uh, simply has a little V-clip that goes on the side of the ratchet, and as you back it off, uh, the, the friction clip grabs the anti-reverse dog and holds it in place. Free spool mechanism sitting on posts, the gear, uh, spool gear, and then the free spool uh, jack. Uh, looks like this one's got factory lube on it, so I'm just going to put a little bit more on, just for, uh, for fun. You don't know when you get these back uh, from a warehouse when you buy these as takeoffs how long uh, these have been in play. But uh, it's a nice uh, machine gear. Uh, we're going to go put that back on. Seat that to the one. Three uh, fabric washers. Traditional setup. So you have the main gear. And it goes 
fabric washer, round washer, fabric washer, eared washer, fabric washer. And one of the things I noticed on this, uh, these are not lubricated, so I'm going to put some drag grease on there. The thing with the drag grease, uh, you know, some people wonder what, what is the purpose of drag grease. Uh, drag grease is pretty much uh, waterproof. So uh, at the end of the day, if you work all of this grease in here, like I'm doing with this gloved hand, uh, that if you put the two washers next to each other, if it's done properly, it's almost hard to determine, you know, if one has the grease and one does not. Uh, but uh, the, the big deal again is that uh, it keeps these water waterproof and uh, helps them to free from sticking to the metal washers. Uh, which has occurred in a lot of reels that uh, get heavy usage. So we'll just put this one back together, the last one. Uh, again, the new reel, so uh, Ben doesn't ship it with that, but that's uh, that's okay. And then uh, we'll put this back on. And uh, you, so we've got a pretty high-speed reel here. I didn't see the specs on it, but a pretty high-speed reel. Uh, simple in design, should last a long time. Not a lot of moving or breaking parts in this one. Uh, we'll take over the other side, just take a look, because there, there was a funny little noise in this. Uh, but uh, it just could be that maybe there wasn't enough lubrication here when it came from the factory. Uh, I'm just going to put a, a shot of blue grease in this little uh, bushing on the back end where the spool sits as well. And a little bit more on that uh, free spool cam. I'm just going to put that case back on, simple enough. So sometimes I like to take reels apart it's just to see how they work. And uh, that's the case today. So uh, you've noticed I've used the parts bucket over here. And uh, I've encouraged people to do that because it keeps all the pieces and parts in one place. So that as you go to reassemble the reels, you know where to find the pieces rather than laying them out on your workbench and having them uh, potentially scatter uh, or get lost. Uh, the other thing uh, I always recommend is taking pictures or having the schematic. I happen to have pulled the schematic because I've never opened this reel before. So I had an idea of what it is. And uh, this would be an example of a schematic. It's a burst and it uh, shows all the pieces and parts to it. And this one, because it's a pen reel, it's available at penparts.com. And uh, even though this is a new reel, like I said, there was a little bit of a noise in there. So before I went to sell this reel. I wanted to make sure that uh, I visually took a look at it, made sure there wasn't a broken piece in there. And uh, if there was, quite honestly, I would return it to Penn because it's warrantied. Uh, but um, I don't, don't think that's necessary here. So I'm going to just complete these. I'm setting the screws down now. And then, uh, if, you took, if you didn't know how the series of these went, uh, that's when you would go back to reference your pictures. I remember how these went. So I have the bearing and then this little shim. And I have the two smaller of the washers. Then the two larger washers. Followed by the star drag. Just gonna make sure this is square as it goes on. Seating these, you don't ever want to put too much pressure on these. You want to make sure that they come in square because if they don't, you're gonna strip the, the handle and it won't work properly. Okay, and that's a good example of how it works properly. Then there was a tension washer, the handle. This has got a high-speed lever handle on it. It can go to the second slot and give you more uh, leverage. This was shipped with the, uh, the middle being used. I took a mental note of that. Uh, again, if you didn't, didn't know that, you could go back to your pictures and take looks. And we have the retaining clip. And sometimes you have to play with that handle nut just a little bit. So this uses a standard uh, Standard hex nut here. It doesn't use the uh, the older style uh, pen reels uh, lockdown screw. So uh, you have to have another set of wrenches if you're uh, used to working on the older 209 reel. Okay, that 
I'm going to tighten that down. We're good there now. I'm, I'm going to go over the other side just because I heard that noise uh, before. I just want to check it all out. So in order to do that, we're going to. This is the side you would open up to take the spool out, and you want to make sure that uh, that everything's well lubricated in there as well. Uh, again, I don't think that it came from the factory with uh, bad lube, but what I think is if it sat in the store for a while and then was shipped back to a warehouse, possibly because the the rod had a broken tip or something, uh, those warehouses are not climate controlled for the most part. Become quite uh, hot, and uh, they tend to get. Annoyed. Okay, so here's the back side of the plate. Here's a second bearing here. Uh, this is your plastic wheel that drives the level wind feature. This is all uh, done well. There's nothing wrong here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, oil on the bearing while I'm have this open. I'm going to grab a paper towel and just clean the spool because I do notice there's a little bit of dirt on the spool. And it could be as simple as that. It could be that there was just a little bit of dirt that got trapped in this. So we'll just, we'll just clean that out. And then there's a burring on the spool as well, so I'm going to make sure that I get the lubrication on that too. Okay, so we saw that there was a burring on the shaft, the burring on the spool, and the burring on this side is three burrings. The fourth one must be in the handle, but uh, I, I'm going to claim ignorance on where the fourth one is. And we're just going to go put this one back together. And then the last thing I'm going to do before uh, I uh, wrap this one up is I'm just going to put some oil on that uh, level wind uh, assembly there, the worm gear, and uh, catch the pole and the, uh, the line guide. And again, it wasn't making a, a, a grinding noise or anything. It was just a little bit of an annoyance, quite honestly. And uh, it could just be that, uh, that this was dried. So uh, what are we learning here? We've seen that this is a pretty solid reel. It's got uh, high capacity. It's got four ball bearings to it. It looks like typical pen quality with the, uh, the machine gears there. It is a departure from the way that the old uh, Pier uh, uh, 209s or the, uh, uh, the 309 series was in terms of uh, the manufacturer and design. It uh, looks very much like a uh, Shakespeare Tidewater, if, uh, if you've ever had any, any of those apart. Uh, not a bad engineering design at all. It's uh, uh, acceptable, and uh, it looks like this one uh, will be quite a fighter. All right, so I just put a little bit of oil on the, uh, on the worm gear and snuck a little bit up into the pole there. I'm going to give this uh, tightened down for the drag. We're going to give Okay, that uh, whatever the noise was, it was gone. So I think it was a matter of the uh, squeaky reel gets the uh, gets the attention, if you will. And uh, it looks like this one will be a nice reel for somebody to uh, to put in the service real soon. So uh, my overall view on this one: good reel, solid engineering. Uh, it's certainly worth the fifty to sixty-five to seventy-five dollar pricing that's in the marketplace for these. So. Uh, I'm going to conclude the video with that. If uh, you like this one, please uh, indicate that on the uh, like button. If you'd like to see more of these, uh, please subscribe to my channel as I post frequently. And uh, I post uh, the items that I bring into my shop uh, that I work on, I repair, and I put back into service. Hence the, uh, the name Second Chance Tackle, giving all those reels a second chance to go out there and uh, catch some fish and make some people happy. All right, so uh, thank you for viewing the video. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.